uh, simply is no other people sent more Google for match reports in than than these two who both sent the same amount in during the regular season, um, covering all sorts of games, uh, all sorts of times, and and great contributions as well that we enjoyed. So Absolutely. I felt it was only right. We felt yeah. it was only right for this award to be shared. Absolutely, and it's it's and it's two gentlemen at opposite ends of the spectrum as well. Tyler's a young man involved in the sport, and Brian is more of an elder statesman of rugby league. It would well, be fair it's to not that say. Old. It's, Anyway, a little bit older than us, but not much older. Do you not think so? He's got he's got a decade on us. But I think, well, I would have thought maybe more than that slightly, but I don't want to do the guy down when we're when we're rewarding his contributions. Yeah. But congratulations to, to he might well to be on a plane to. Uh... He is. He is. I think hopefully this will make a nice gift for him as yeah. he lands in Australia. Um, but no, congratulations, the inaugural inaugural winners of the Fulbright Award, Brian Davies and Tyler Casper. Yep. Uh, what's uh, so we next move on to the Paul Campbell Award for Fan of the Year. So this is people who've gone above and beyond supporting the their sport, clubs. really, yes. their club and their sport. So talk us through this one. Yeah, well, we base it on um, people, as you say, how they've supported their club and rugby league throughout the year. So it might not be based on their co- direct contributions to the Super League pod. Yeah. It'll be based on things that we've observed them doing um, over the year. So previous winners um, of the Paul Campbell Award, and they are named for their initial recipients. Um, so 2014, Paul Campbell was London Broncos' fan of pride, and he actually walked out with the flag uh, at the grand final. Exactly, so yeah. it was difficult to uh, to not award it to Paul. Then in 2015, Rich Wilkinson travelled literally halfway across the world to support his beloved Leeds Rhinos in their grand final, and got himself in the press and this, that and the other. So that was a hell of an effort. Um, and then in 2016, Aaron Smith down south with the Brent with Eels, constantly kept us up to date, really involved with the development of Grassroots Rugby League down south and in that neck of uh, in that neck of Essex. We couldn't think of a more worthy winner at that time. Um, so when you and I had that conversation about who do we think most reflected kind of this um, committed fan of the sport and fan of the genre, um, we could only really think of, of, of one person, couldn't we? So this year's Paul Campbell Award for Fan of the Year goes to uh, Brian Davies simply uh, because of his love of the sport and the fact that he's been everywhere. He's miles Bill. as well. He's, yeah, <laughs> the, the miles this guy has clocked up following and supporting rugby league, not just his Wakefield Trinity side, but getting to grounds all over the country and now going over to support... Spending time with us at the Summer Bash. He's had two trips to, to, two Australia. Trips to yeah. Australia this year. One for a friendly note. And it wasn't ju- he didn't just take in the England game and that was it. He wanted nope. to sample the environment of all of the rep games he could get around that weekend. Yeah. And, and he got and, his reports on it and everything. Yeah. He got to the ladies' games as well. Just a superb, superb... You know, we value his contributions anyway. But what massively when he sends us an email like about the the young referee that he knew as mm. well, and those sorts of things, it just shows just how much Brian loves, lives, breathes, and cares yeah. about this sport. Absolutely. On I'm, to... I'm hoping that he doesn't flick open his a uh, his device or whatever when he's when he's on his trip over and read that the Wakefield Stadium seems to have got it. So. Yeah, there's been we've not done a lot of news, have we? But there would be awful an awful lot to cover, yeah. wouldn't there, if we were if we're doing a full yeah. show. So yeah. hopefully this will be a bit a sweeten, the pill. Blow, yeah. sweeten the pill somewhat. Okay. So the next award Mark and you're gonna do this one is the Hodgson O'Brien Hero Award. Yeah, so we brought this in last year, um as the first year and it was won by Dom Hodgson and Paul O'Brien, so that was why it got uh, named as such, and this is basically for people who do stuff outside of the rugby league spectrum, but that the SLP, well, not necessarily outside, but that the SLP family really get behind and support and appreciate. But they're doing stuff that we think, wow, that that's that's an extra mile, yeah. sort of thing. Um, and last year, it went to Dom and Paul for the, the fundraising they were doing. Mm. Um, really, so this year it's also a joint. Jointly handed out award because yeah. hey, we can't have too many heroes uh, in this day and age, can mm. we not? So um, the first winner, co-winner, is Dom Hodgson. Yes, I mean all the work is done for the Martin House charity, running um, a lot in a lot of suits. Yeah, uh, the, the the stories he told us about the three runs in three days oh of God. escalated distances at, at Disney um, and how that tore him apart whilst he was dressed as. Elsa, is it? Elsa, is that, yeah. Is that the, the snow girl thing? From Frozen. Yeah, that's Don't the worry. one. It's probably the guy that has no kids. 
And it's Did shared. You know about Frozen. What's that film about where it's all cold? And it's shared by Rich Langley. Yes. And, and this is a thank you from me and you mostly, really, for what he did when we pulled together those fundraising money for the the for Joshua's Might and Under Eight side. Yeah. And basically, Rich got in touch with us pretty quickly when it seemed clear that I didn't have the capacity to to organise that. And, and he, he, he he jumped in. He sorted it out. He got it all together yeah. and was happy to give it up in. SLP's name sort mm-hmm. of thing that the, the role they played there getting that money together very quickly efficiently and delivering it so we and also to... he organised the was that not a charity event as well the the uh, rugby league golf he didn't organise I just went to oh did he go to <laughs> oh he, he's done some more work for charity yeah. there as well there you are but yeah um, so that's that was for someone's testimonial I think oh was it yeah but, but it was for charity but and he contributed but yeah so for that we want to thank yeah Rich there. absolutely and these are two two again two stellar Super League pod listeners next award uh, the Dargana SLP International oh sorry we're not on that one are we no we've slid down the Lee Whitnell Rookie of the Year another one that was re- that was introduced last year for the first time yeah. Tom uh, after the sort of show's grown is obviously we, we see new people coming on board every year absolutely and we wanted to celebrate those people yes we did and last year obviously Lee Whitnell was the winner of that the Warrington fan um, but that's this... that he's remained consistent in his second year too yeah absolutely he's carried it on his, his sophomore year of, uh, of, of Super League podding has been just as strong um, it's nice to look and think about the new people that come on board to the show because we've got a hardcore of listeners and we've got people that kind of orbit us as well and it's nice to see when people come in and start getting involved with the show that we've picked up new listeners because that reinvigorates us. Um, and this year we picked up a particularly strong candidate for Rookie of the Year in the eventual winner. Um, particularly at a period of time in the podcast where we were looking for a stronger voice from the St. Helens camp as well. We've got a few uh, St. Helens fans that listen in Australia and come in from abroad and different places. But to actually have a man on the ground again was fantastic. Um, And his opinions are always very strong. He was always very forthright in his thoughts on what we had to say. Exceptionally entertaining as well. Um, It's probably been a while since he's been referred to as a rookie in any other sense, really. Um, But congratulations and, and, and big thank yous to... 2017's SLP Rookie of the Year, David Powell. Yeah, St. David. St. David on Twitter if you want to give him a yeah. follow. Uh, but congratulations, David. It's um, it's lovely to have new listeners like you coming on board and giving us your Really insight. buying in. Absolutely. Massively so yeah. as well. Yeah. And I think Saints fans have found it hard to buy in with a Wigan fan talking so much. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so it does, um, it does add, it does temper your opinion somewhat, doesn't it, um, from time to time. But David. it's nice so, to get balance. Of course on it is. Show. Absolutely. And we welcome that. Okay, as you alluded I to, I jumped Mark, the gun. The next award is the Dargana SLP International Listener of the Year Award. Doesn't need a great deal of explanation, this one. It's just someone who gets in touch regularly and listens a lot from a different country yeah different nation yeah. To, to Great Britain outside, the, outside Great Britain yeah yeah. Uh, so obviously Dargana was a winner before we had Paul Michael Craig winning it from Down Under Alan Walker winning it from Catalonia mm. um, and this year's winner wins it for largely outperforming you in the weekly quiz yes I would suggest um, oh, so, absolutely. so he's given it away somewhat but for, for his weekly updates on his quiz scores mm. Mitchell Darts has won the, the International Listener of the Year Award this year it's always been good to know how much less how little I know compared to everybody and Mitch has been a big part of that so bravo but he does it with Simpsons memes he does he does he's a big Simpsons and that's always good and it's always nice to know that one of my my first poo of the day on a Tuesday morning would usually be accompanied by a tweet from Mitchell are we going to give an honourable mention to anyone else well there's there's, there's, we haven't done the other awards so why would we in this (laughs) fair enough I I just feel terrible I can't cope with the guilt but we'll move on well, you get to announce, if, if this will help you get over it, you get to announce the award of all the awards. Yes. The, the one the night is all built up to. It is. This is the grand finale, isn't it? This is the one that they would all rush back from the gents to sit that sit around their tables at if we were hosting yeah. this um, in, a, in a big facility. Uh, the Andy Barden SLP Listener of the Year Award. This is exactly what it says, really. Um, Andy Barden... Probably is unfamiliar to some listeners now because he's kind of mercurial, but in the very early stages of Super League Pod, we could rely on on, on Andy Barden, the ex-professional wrestler, current police officer, to get in touch with us on a weekly basis and give us his feedback on all matters rugby league, and loads to do with Wigan, um, and he gets in touch as often as time permits now, being a very strong family man. Um, He was one of the foundation listeners, and in 2014 he was 
given this award. And it's our way of saying thank you to the listener that we feel has contributed overall the most to the show this year. And it's a real big honour from our point of view because it's not just necessarily about Facebook or Twitter. It's about emails and getting in touch with us and meeting us out. And, and being a part, being a part of the, of the community family, yeah. in terms of interacting with other listeners and, and all the work that goes into the podcast. Bringing so. something to the table that we've just found really enjoyable and engaging and and the whole SLP has bought into it. Exactly. So, previous winners include Andy Barden, as I've alluded to, Tim Griffiths from Down South, and last year's winner was Scoots McKenzie over in Hull. Um, But, given his interactions with us this year, and given his... Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Support. Stellar sportsmanship in the face of of, of gut wrenching defeat as well, I might add. Uh, there can be only one winner. And There's no asterisks year. against this champion. There is no asterisks against this. It's hashtag one in a row for Mr. Fat Boy Rob Ordish. Congratulations, Rob. Um, again, and it's and it's heartfelt and uni- and we both agreed wholeheartedly on this one, didn't we? There, there was no conversation, was there? Really, no, um, not this, this year about this award. Um, it just offers a lot of support as well that goes unseen by the rest of the SLP yes, he does. uni, I suppose. It but keeps it's... my feet on the ground by reminding me that I'm punching well above low weight in my choice of life partner as well, so that's useful. He's, he, he basically mimers me every every couple of weeks why I've not set up a Patreon page so he can start donating money to the show as yeah, well. Yeah, there you go. So there we go. So, fine. so if you do end up find, finding that you're allowed to start playing for Super League Pod, it's probably mostly down to Rob. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get in touch with him and let him know your thoughts. Okay. Okay, congratulations to everybody who uh, who won an award throughout. And thanks to everybody who voted as well, and pe- the people who engaged in the extra feedback um, part mm. of the form. It's given us a, a, a few different insights that we're going to take away and think about a few things. There's yeah. been, you know, a few ideas and stuff. The one thing I would say... I've not that, read these yet, No, I've so. not sent them on to you yet. Um, <laughs> The, the, the last question, which was, do you have any other feedback, which I expected to be more along the lines of, you know, I like the quiz, or I don't like the bits that you do at the end, or... You, do you know what I mean? Hmm. Kind of constructive about the show. Constructive criticism. It was mostly just people giving us a reach around. So, hey. so that was... That That's was, probably why you've not sent them on to me yet. Yeah. We had some doors. great feedback about the meetups as well. Um, my, my absolute favourite one was that um, Tom should get some shorts that have zips on the pocket so he doesn't lose his fucking wallet again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Guess who that came from? Probably from Cass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, listen, to be honest, I, I couldn't... I, I'm, I've learnt that lesson the hard way. Yeah. So, there you go. Right, well, that, that wraps up the, that part, but we're not finished with our sort of... Oh, this section no. of the show because we're going to bring the quiz in at this stage so it's early for you. Fabulous. I don't think that's going to make a difference. I'm going to try and do the quiz relatively quickly. Great. Um, so we're not going to hang around too much waiting for answers. But basically, it's a who am I? I'm going to describe myself as a, as a rugby league player who's played in Super League during the last season. Okay. Um, the order of the questions slash answers actually might give you a clue as we go through as to what the next question answer is. Might be to narrow down. Oh, I see. Okay. To, to narrow down who your options for the answer are. Right. Can I borrow um, your pen? Okay. Just to make notes. You can borrow my pen. I don't Thank know. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to score you now. Well, I think I think we all know where the score is going to go. But all right. Um, and there's twelve questions. Oh. And it's all about one person. Or no, 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 no. They're all about different individuals. Oh, it's different. Twelve different people. Twelve different people. The sort of based on things that have happened this year. Is okay. Different. Kind of statsy to get a few stats in the show, right? Um, like I like to do. You know, I so, love stats. Question one, right? Uh, in my first year in Super League, I played every one of the thirty-two possible games. The only player to do that, even though I'm a hard-working forward, I picked up a winner's medal along the way, but not the one I really wanted. Who am I? Is it Jesse Seni Lafayo? One from one, Tom. Look at that. There you go. J S L. Give us a slight pause for the listeners to be able to stop. I thought we to get through it fucking quickly. Number two. Right, go on. I dominated Super League offloading stats in 2017 with a successful offload coming from a quarter of all my carries. And on average, I made 4.3 offloads per game. A huge 59 more offloads in total than the second most in the league. Who am I? Is it Adam Cuthbertson? It is Adam Cuthbertson Um, of the Leeds Rhinos. There you go. That's another one. C. Two. Okay, two. number three. Right. I had more negative impact plays, that's our errors, missed tackles, and penalties combined, mm-hmm. 
than any other player in Super League, with 134 in total. Okay. Mostly from being second worst in errors and third worst for missed tackles. Although I was top five when it came to combined tries and assists with 33. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That uh, that helped me to be the that was helped by being the top try scorer at my side. Okay, which put me in the Super League Dream Team. Right, who am I? Are you Albert Kelly? I am Albert Kelly of Very LFC. Good error machine. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, way better than. Way oh better God! Than will you let it go about fucking?